Predators, they exploit weakness, track its prey like a game. It seems to enjoy it. Here's your look at the new NECA toys. Predator Thermal Vision Fugitive Predator. Predators have been genetically evolving themselves to be stronger, smarter, and more lethal than ever before. When a young boy accidentally activates a mysterious alien device and becomes the target of these enhanced predators, only his father and the most unlikely ragtag bunch of crazy ex-military agents can save him and the human race from obliteration. This special figure recreates the thermal version appearance of the fugitive predator from the movie poster. First thing we'll do is go ahead and take the Ultra Megatron, put it to the very top of the Fugitive Predator, and we'll stop it right there. According to the tape measure, the figure stands 8.3 inches in height. Centimeters, yes, we can do it, do it. go ahead and do the centimeters. 21, 21 21.1 centimeters tall. Accessories are generally pretty light. Uh, the only thing you're going to come in, only thing that to come included with a thermal version, thermal vision Fugitive Predator is actually just the blades, the gauntlet blades. So he gets two sets of those, and let me show you whereabouts they, they go. If you grab the figure, right around to the side here, you've got slots, probably a little harder to make out because of the translucent nature of the plastic, and so happens that it blends into the background here. But right there, there's a slot, there's a slot, and you can go ahead and take the blades. Now, when you are putting the blades in, you obviously will wanna make sure that you have the thermal vision facing outward, and those will just tab into place. You have to be careful when you are putting them in. I certainly have to be careful putting them in because of the nature of these being thinner, more brittle plastic. When you are putting them in, you just may want to put the weight more so to the back and not to the midsection of the blade. Because certainly, again, like the last thing you want to do is have those break off. Now, he has one set here. And using your imagination, or let me just do that for you. If imagination isn't your thing, imagining what it would look like on the other side I'd be more than happy to step up if you will and I'll put those in place for you just like that of course the mileage and the length of time in which those will fit in and stay in the gauntlets will vary it depends on how often if you are moving his arm for example I've noticed moving bending twisting things such as forearms Sometimes I've popped those right out. If the general consensus is you're okay with the fact that I take them out now, we can resume the rest of this review. Show of hands, everybody. Yes, yes. Okay, that person's against it. Okay, it seems like the majority of everybody, the majority of the room seems everybody's okay with taking these blades back out. I'm just taking them out because I know they're gonna fall back out. Last thing I certainly don't wanna do is having them fall and drop all over the floor. As for the figure itself, a uh, splendid sight for the eyes. Uh, primarily, as you could probably guess it, this is the regular Fugitive Predator that we've already looked at on the channel, just given a fresh coat of paint. Why are we looking at this part, though, when the fresh coat of paint is on the other side? It's just to show you that the makeup of this mold is being done with a translucent blue plastic. Everything, as far as the eye can see, at the very least on the back of the Predator, is all done in translucent plastic. Unfortunately, none of the paint makes its way to the back. Instead, all the coloring and bright nature of the colors are all really relegated to the front. It's sort of kept all centric to the front section of the Predator. I guess from an argument standpoint, anybody that says they could have easily painted the back, I'm sure there is a show of hands, somebody saying, why couldn't they have painted the back? I guess the logic is, I mean, you're not really going to be looking at the figure from the back anyways. Generally, when you are displaying your figure, I, I would, I'm not going to hopefully assume, I'm not going to jump to conclusions and assume everybody's going to display their figure, but I would think the majority, there goes the majority once again, would probably display the figure from the front on your shelf, right? That seems logical, doesn't it? So that's probably why they've only printed the front, painted the front. It's not that they didn't necessarily want to print the back. 
And I guess logically they could really have done the back too, but you're really only going to see the figure from the front anyways. What you are seeing from the front though is a nice combination of cooler blues and slightly warmer reds. Now this is created from the movie poster and really the subsequent DVD Blu-ray release. Anybody still collecting DVDs? I'm sure there's still a market out there. So one side is sort of, I don't want to say sort of on kept on the, the cooler blue, because as you see, it's frolicking here. You describing coloring by wording it as frolicking? I might have just done that. Frolicking amongst the cooler, lighter blues are the greens, you get a little bit warmer, then you get to the r yellows and the reds where most of the heat then is sort of starting to come come from the figure, come from the character. So you get a little bit more of the yellows and the reds running, running really down the side and the areas around the eyes. Those eyes would be also a warm point for, uh, for thermal heat to be developing. Um, it's sort of a rhyme or reason as to why some areas are a little bit more warmer than others. Like the plate here, for example, gets a little more warmer, warmer of a color here in the yellow and gets colder blue down below. I guess you could say around the groin area of the Predator is a little warmer than perhaps the lower area. Areas such as the feet, for example, only the toes get the little touchings there of the yellow and the red, kept primarily left just to the devices of the translucent blue. I love this sculpt and I loved the sculpt the first time we had a look at the figure. It works surprisingly, to really I guess no surprise, works quite well here in the thermal vision. Now again, the only thing that you're really only getting from this guy is, for accessory wise, is just the gauntlet blades. I guess to some extent you're also getting the plasma caster uh, pistol there, or the plasma caster cannon there featured on the top of his shoulder, which does have its own independent ball joints. Well, hinge joints. You can see there's a hinge joint right there, which does really most, if not all, the work. And then there's a hinge joint up here as well. Now, there is also a ball joint. I'm doing this while kind of behind the scenes, making that Michael Scott meme face, that face, because I don't certainly want this breaking. Having a history of using clear pegs, at least for their older figures, some of the NECA figures then had problems where limbs, for example, were breaking off. Um, this not necessarily be the case here, because it seems that while all of the body makeup is translucent plastic, it seems like the joints themselves are made of a solid blue plastic. So I don't think it's going to cause the same sort of breakage issue that some of the older NECA Cull Classic figures had using a solid blue plastic. And it seems to be the case everywhere too, even like bringing the legs out, there's a leg out there, it does look like this one here is a solid blue plastic. Although I can't help but notice that this joint right here is using translucent plastic. It seems to be two different types that they've used. Um, but it is does look quite good being able to mostly see through the figure. I suppose a light source would certainly come in handy where if you projected it from the back. Uh, let's see, hold on one second. Yeah, so I just wanted to grab my phone here and I'm going to do my best not to shine it in everybody's eyes, but I want to show you just how that light source can peek its way through the translucent blue plastic. It's a little bit more difficult here because there's so much more extra stuff happening. Joints are overlaying sockets, sockets are overlaying, overlaying body parts. So you're probably not going to see it as much here. You see a little bit of it peeking through the hair. Primarily, if not all of it, you can see more so through the limbs here. As we resume the rest of this review, uh, the belt section, this part here, the little skirt that drapes over his lower torso is made up of a softer plastic. As well, he has these little, uh, I don't say little, more thigh guards that are located on the sides of his legs. They do, and you probably have already seen them, are notorious for just dropping off, just leaving the ship altogether. It may involve you just to kind of continue to hike them up. Sort of if you buy a pair of loose pants and you wear them out, you can always recognize somebody that has a pair of loose pants. They're always sort of just to keep adjusting their waist. You may have the same problem here also with thermal version, thermal vision predator. Other than that, everything else looks really good on this guy. Um, all the stuff that I really liked so much about the initial sculpt carries here well, just it has a different coat of paint.
and of course its makeup is a little bit different by the plastic that they used. Okay, so we have a look at this guy's posability, because I know you have places you need to go. The head rotates back and forth. Um, he does actually have a ball joint, but like any other predator figure, hair always seems to be the problem. Hair gets in the way when you are rotating the head around. Not that you would be, or I would encourage you to be rotating the head all the way around. That would kill the predator. Uh, shoulders move for forward and back. Luckily, this part of the shoulder right here, soft plastic, easy to work, easy to manage. You can move the shoulders back and forth, and those shoulder plates stay out of the way. The shoulders hinge also out. He has the new double joint in the elbow, one right there and one right there, allowing a double hinge happening if he wants to flex his biceps. I guess predators can do that also as well. Hands, the gauntlet areas rotate as well. Let me just hold that to show you the hands. The hands rotate all the way around as well and hinge back and forth. Then we have a look at the torso, which has a full ball joint. We look at the lower torso, which also has a lower ball joint. And speaking of softer things on the figure, we already looked at this soft point on the figure. Let's look at this section here. It's this sort of bottom section of his armor that covers over his abdomen area. This is a soft plastic also painted over top of it with the, the very nice green, yellow, and red. Ball joint on the lower torso. The legs split out considerably, actually. He has a forward and back motion on the legs. Doesn't have what seems to be a swivel on the cut on the thigh. So like, well, I guess it does up here. Just does here a little on the tighter side. So he has swivel on the top cut of the thigh right there, right where it attaches to the ball joint. Can you see the ball joint? It's right there. Right in there. Right there. Has a single and a double, a double knee articulation. And then he also has the foot articulation, which hinges up and down. And you can rotate the feet all the way around. Ankle crunch. Yes, he does have that too. Ankle rocker does have that too. Overall, pretty happy with the figure. I liked the figure before. I like this figure just as much, but I like it for different reasons. It's like having two kids in the house. If you have kids, for example, you love the kids equally, but you kind of love them for their own distinct reasons. Maybe Jackie is a little bit more funny. She's playful. She's, but then Samantha, you know, is the intellectual. She's the smart one. She's, I know parents will generally say they love their kids equally so, but it's, it's never really the case. They're just telling you that. I like this Predator for a different reason, yet still a similar reason why I liked the initial Fugitive Predator. It's a great looking sculpt, but I really like the fact that they make use of a mold, as toy companies like to do, made use of a mold and just incorporated some really popping colors on the front of the figure. I have to stress, on the front of the figure, but the figure still looks really good. It's a tale as old as time. No, it's no, it's not. It's not Beauty and the Beast. But it's a tale as old as time that toy companies will want to make use and stretch as much out of one mold as they possibly can. This will cause a lot of companies to do re-releases of figures and often different color swap outs. NECA has done this in the past, a tale as old as time, with predators and alien figures alike. A lot of the alien figures and predator figures have gotten double dipped, triple dipped, and even quadruple dipped depending on what molds that they wanted to make use of. Translucent predators we've seen before, NECA has done it themselves, and I personally am always fine with that. If it is justified by the type of character that it is, which it is here in Predator, you can always make a predator clear, somewhat successfully, or you can also give them the thermal vision. Now, thermal vision has not been, it's not new to this specific figure, but it works quite well on this figure as well, giving him translucent blue plastic, which almost sort of has its own glowing effect to it. And even though it's not on the back, it's all relegated to the front of the figure, it really does pop quite a bit. I like this mold when we had a look at the Fugitive Predator figure. If you haven't seen the review of that, by all means, check that out. And it works well here for this figure also. It's interesting that because you just add new paint to an existing mold, figures can look so drastically different from one another. If you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, some good news, my friends, is that the Thermal Vision version of the Fugitive Predator is now available in retail stores. Not all retail stores. I think some stores don't have this one, but it still should be pretty frequently available, pretty easy available, if you guys are interested to scope this one out. Sort of scoping it out the same way that the Predator scopes out its prey, 
you don't have to necessarily make those noises though while you're going down the toy aisles looking for this guy. Although if somebody was to give it to you and you say thank you, hopefully they'll come back with anytime. That was a Predator joke, by the way. Either way, though, today we were having a look at the very cool, this is the Predator. Not great movie, but still a pretty neat design on the character. This was the Predator Thermal Vision Fugitive Predator. You guys want to go back and have a look at some of my other Predator reviews? Don't blame you. You guys want to go back and have a look at some of my NECA reviews as well? <gasps> you do? Well, there's playlists for both. You're welcome. Anytime. Make sure as well you hit that little subscribe button down below because certainly more videos also will be coming soon to this channel. No need to thank me. Anytime. As always, guys, thanks for watching as you always do. See you next time.